Hey everyone, welcome to Learn Audio Engineering. My name is Robert, and in today's guide, we'll explore the art of recording clean vocals. Now, this is super important because many of you songwriters out there might be unknowingly hitting a roadblock in your recording journey right out of the gate. And here's the kicker, it's a problem that's easy to fix at the start, but almost impossible to correct once the damage is done. You could be unintentionally sabotaging your own sound from the very beginning. Great music is a partnership between all those involved, the artist writing and performing the piece, and the audio engineer producing and shaping the final mix. But this collaboration comes with a catch. To use the analogy of a photograph, if your recording isn't pristine, you're handing over a picture to the mix engineer that's overblown or overexposed. It's like capturing a beautiful moment, but with too much light. The picture is overexposed, washing out the details and leaving the final image lacking the depth and nuance that makes it truly captivating. Let's work together to ensure your musical snapshots are perfectly exposed, allowing the mix engineer to highlight every detail and create a mix that truly stands out. Stick around because you're going to learn how to elevate your recordings and achieve professional quality vocals. The first step to recording professional vocals is learning how to set the proper amount of gain for your vocalist. And before we talk about why that's important, I want to show you and have you identify the difference. For question one, listen to these four short examples and identify the one where clipping occurs. The weather today is mild with a slight breeze. In this tutorial, we'll cover the basics of identifying clipping when recording vocals. Please remember to submit your assignments before the deadline. In this tutorial, we will cover the basics of identifying clipping when recording vocals. Okay, notice how one of these is clearly more distorted than the others. The waveform shows that the peaks have been completely squared off. This means that the full dynamic range of the performance hasn't been accurately recorded because the gain level overloaded the system. This results in a very sausaged recording that is harsh and unpleasant to listen to. Let's do another. Question two, again, four vocal examples. Try to identify which recording is clipping. An audio interface allows you to connect your microphone to your computer for recording purposes. The meeting has been rescheduled to 2 p.m. tomorrow. The new software update includes several bug fixes and improvements. Ensure that the recording levels are set appropriately to avoid clipping and distortion. Just like before, we have a total sausage. Even though I did my best to gain match these examples, the distorted one has this loud, abrasive quality that you just can't really take out of it. This is a big reason why you want to set your vocal gain so that you have several decibels of headroom before hitting 0 dBFS and clipping. But these last two distorted examples were recorded at the maximum gain level on my interface, so the vocal was practically living in the red. And that's not typically how vocals are recorded, I hope. But even at lower gain levels, if you're not keeping a close eye on the meters, it's not always crystal clear when your gain level is pushing the limits. Now let's up the difficulty. We've got four more examples, but this time only the peaks of one of them are clipping. Just as before, your mission is to identify which example is crossing the clipping threshold. Here we go, question three. And I'm sorry for making you believe me. One foot after another and it's enough to make you go insane. One foot after another and it's enough to make you go insane. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel to help us hit the big 100,000 subscriber milestone. So only a few peaks have been squared off here, but those parts still contribute to the harsh and abrasive quality of the vocal in letter B, especially when compared to letter C, which is the same line recorded at a proper gain level. Let's do one more question four. I don't know, take four had a better feel. Let's listen back one more time. The new software update includes several bug fixes and improvements. An audio interface allows you to connect your microphone to your computer for recording purposes. I don't believe it. The snare drum is still out of tune. 
So besides the rogue plosives, there's also a few places in letter C that have been squared off from clipping. So let's quickly go over the characteristics of clean audio. We want no background hum or noise. We want it to be as dry as possible. And we also want plenty of headroom before hitting zero dBFS. That is the absolute limit of digital recording. And we don't wanna see that red light come on because that means you've crossed the threshold of what the system can handle so you're no longer accurately recording the performance. So clean audio is going to have a clear dynamic range that reflects the intensity of the performance. The louder sections are going to display natural peaks. It should sound smooth and easy to listen to, and it may actually sound a little dull or quiet in comparison to a finished vocal. But why is this all important? Why shouldn't you send over a loud clipped vocal track? Distortion, volume, and intensity are all carefully incorporated into a vocal during the mix process. This character is added incrementally based on your desired outcome. However, recording a vocal with distortion on it from the start commits you to a specific distorted sound, leaving no option to refine or make it cleaner afterwards. The best practice is to focus on recording your best performance as clean as possible. Although it's not as exciting as a fully produced vocal, a clean recording doesn't restrict the audio engineer from doing their job. The effects that really transform a vocalist into a superstar are usually added throughout the mixing process to ensure that we can maintain full control over the tone and dynamic range of your vocal. This is because you maintain the most control working with a clean vocal. You can always go back and try something else if you don't like what you've done. But keep all your production work, keep your rough mixes. These really help engineers to get a sense of your production ideas, but make sure to send over a clean version with all of your processing bypassed. So distortion, compression, limiting loudness, whatever character you desire, leave it on a reference track and off of your clean vocal track, because these can always be added and tweaked in the mix. Recording at home is fantastic, but sometimes nuances get lost in the mix. I specialize at turning your raw tracks into professional, captivating music. But here's the thing. I want to collaborate with you from the very start. If your recordings are feeling a bit like a blurry snapshot, let's fix that. Connect with me, and together, we'll navigate the world of home studio recording, and you'll learn how to record better tracks that allow you to get your dream mix. Vocals often form the most relatable part of a song for listeners. Achieving excellence in vocal recording not only expands the possibilities in the mix, but also provides your audience with more to latch onto during distribution. The quality of production, specifically the clarity and character of vocals, profoundly shapes listener response, which can influence a song's performance on streaming platforms. This impact is seen in heightened overall appeal, increased engagement, and greater potential for recognition through playlisting. Once your music has been mixed and mastered, it's ready to share with the world. Enter DistroKid, your one-stop shop for sharing your music on all major streaming platforms. DistroKid makes music distribution fun and easy with unlimited uploads, and artists keep 100% of their royalties and earnings. DistroKid's services are now more accessible than ever with their brand new app available for both iOS and Android. The app allows you to upload songs, edit your releases, view streaming stats, add metadata, and much more. You've put in the time to develop your craft. Now it's time to amplify your reach and make your music heard worldwide. If you're ready to take your music to the next level, use the link in the description to get 7% off your first year subscription with DistroKid. I hope you found these tips helpful in improving your vocal recording. Remember, keeping an eye on levels, watching out for those unexpected peaks, and understanding the tools that you have at your disposal will make a world of difference in your final mix. If you're still wrestling with vocal recording and clipping, or if you have more questions, feel free to reach out. Send me an email, I'd love to work together. I'm here to help you on your journey to achieving that radio-ready sound. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you won't miss videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, keep recording those vocals clean, and I'll see you in the next video. Cause I need some